When we look at our lives, and I tell you that 95% of your life is coming from the subconscious program, this is not, it's new on a scientific awareness of how this mechanism works. But what's interesting is for 400 years, the knowledge that you could program somebody and control their lives has been available. It was the Jesuits who 400 years ago said, give me a child until it's seven and I will show you the man. Most people didn't understand what they were saying. And what it is, is the first seven years, which we now know biologically and scientifically, is the program period. They knew that 400 years ago. And they said, if I can get that program in in the first seven years, that program will determine the life of that individual. I'll show you the man because they will represent the program. Now, the really important part is since every one of us has been programmed, the, the big issue is, so what were those programs? Because if I ask you, so what, what program did you get when you were one year old? I have no idea, I wasn't really there. Uh, and in fact, you were actually being programmed even before you were born, the last trimester of pregnancy. You were being programmed. And I go, well, this is really a critical issue because the first thing I'm telling you is your life is 95% programmed uh, and most of that is, is really disempowering. And of course, the first thing I would think is then, what are those programs so I could deal with them? So I want to make something very easy for you so you don't have to go uh, and review your whole life and try to figure out what the programs are. Save you a lot of time. The fact is this you are playing the program 95% of the day, meaning your life is a printout of your program. So you don't have to go back in time to review. That would just actually irritate the system more because every time you review those things that unsettled you when, when you were younger, it just reinforces that same pain that you had earlier. So going back uh, and, and finding out who did what to who, uh, is more than just a waste of time, it actually will set you back. As a matter of fact, there's an, an old phrase that people have heard and it says, don't kill the messenger over the message. What that means is this, don't go back and blame all the people that did this and that and that and that. That's irrelevant. They, who they are is irrelevant. What's relevant is what program did you walk away with, not who did the event, but what you learned. So now I said, okay, I've been programmed and I have no idea what the program is. I said, then look at your life and here's the simple resolution. Everything in your life that you like and it comes to you is because you have a program to support that. That's wonderful. That means that's great. It's going to come to you because that program is bringing it to you. But in contrast, this is the one that's important. Anything you work hard to accomplish, anything you struggle over to make it happen, anything you put a lot of effort in, I want this, I'm gonna work like crazy, I, I'm gonna get this. Uh, my first question is, why are you working so hard? And the answer is very simple. Anything you're struggling to try to accomplish, whether it's health or love, uh, relationships, whatever it is, if you're struggling, it represents a simple fact your subconscious programming doesn't support that conclusion. So the fact is, what are my programs? Look at your struggle. And wherever you're struggling, the struggle is not because the universe won't provide for you. The struggle is an internal job. The struggle is you're trying to overcome previous programming that prevents you to go to that destination. So the wonderful part about this understanding is you don't have to, to review your life. You can look right now at this one moment, just look in your head and say, what are the things that I keep trying to get? And they, they seem to be elusive. I can't get them. They're always out of reach. I say, the universe is not holding back. It's your own invisible subconscious behavior. It's the best flu shot you'll ever get lives right. with, innately within you. Turns out when you're frustrated, when you're impatient, when you're fearful, the immune system dials down because you're an emergency. It's not, it's, all your energy is going for some threat in your outer world. There's no energy in your inner world for growth and repair. But how do you turn that around? So then as people begin to open their heart, can that chemical begin to, to um, elevate? Mm -hmm. 
four days, 50% change in the 120 people. Their, their IGA levels went up 50% in four days. That's your body's immune system is now upregulating genes that are making proteins and immunoglobulins and, and antibodies that you don't need a flu shot. In other words, your inner state is greater than your outer world. Mm -hmm. So then just by doing that, we now know that your immune system is going to get stronger by the same means. Take 120 people or 50 people and measure 7,500 gene regulations. Okay, in four days, two genes that suppress cancer growth and tumors are activated and upregulated. The genes that stimulate stem cells that go to damaged tissues and repair them, upregulated. The gene for oxidative balance is upregulated. Anti-cancer, anti-aging, mm. anti-heart disease, anti-stroke, anti-neurodegenerative, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial. Just your body's naturally doing this. The gene for neurogenesis. The growth of new neurons in response to novel experiences and learning. This is four days. The mm. gene switches on. Uh, the, the gene for uh, more balance in the pituitary and the pancreas. The gene for the microtubules of the cells, the, the, little, the little fibers that respond to energy and frequency. Right. So in four days, we now know that you can change your genetic destiny if you just practice the inner work. We have research to show that 60 days of meditation five days a week will lengthen your life. The telomeres, the little shoestrings on the end of your DNA get longer. That means your biological age is changing. So we, we have the evidence now to show people what's possible. We have brain scans that, that are so outside of normal that when neuroscientists see them, they're blown away because the amount of energy that's in the brain during this transcendental moment is uh, hundreds of times outside of normal. Wow. I mean, you can't make your brain do that. Something is happening to you and that person's having a transcendental moment. And we mm. now know that we can predict it and we now that know that we can induce it. There was an article some years ago by a professor from Harvard, a medical doctor, a distinguished scientist on nutrition. Charlie. He went to the Hunza territory near Nepal, in the south of Russia. He found people 110, 135, and some 150 years of age. They all sit around the table. They drink vodka, all kinds of wonderful food. But he said their diet is contrary to all the laws, that all the laws of hygiene or diet that we know of in the Western world. They don't seem to know anything about the calories that we have established. He cites the story of one woman, 135 years old. She's smoking all the time. He said, how many cigarettes do you smoke? Okay. Two packages a day, she said. And then she had vodka for breakfast. <laughs> and he said they had tumblers of wine for every meal. He said he had to drink so much wine he was drunk. He, find so, he found some women and some men in the fields working, 120, 125 years old. What was the invisible ingredient? Inner peace, equanimity, equanimity, serenity, goodwill, and the laughter of God, full of laughter. And the only being in all the world who can laugh is man. The reason for that is that God placed it in man so he'd get rid of his arrogance and pride. It's the finest way in the world to release tension feel unhappy, then you generate more thoughts equal to that feeling, which makes more chemicals, and you keep taking energy from the brain and storing it in the body. If you react to people in your life and you feel anger, frustration, whether it's traffic, the news, whatever it is. Parents, you, parents, whatever, girl, what, you're drawing from this field, this electromagnetic field, you're tapping that resource and you're making chemistry out of it and the field shrinks. So now, mm. By doing that and living in survival, the body no longer is a magnet. So now you have very little energy in the brain. In fact, 5% of the energy is in the brain, and 95% is stored in the body. Now the body's been conditioned emotionally. So a lot of energy in the body, very little in the brain. Mm. So in our work... Do we want energy to be in the brain? We want to move energy back up to the brain. So what does that do when we move the energy from the body to the brain or the heart? Well, this is a great thing because once it makes it here, it's going up, uh -huh. right? So we do these different meditations and these different techniques to draw that energy right up to the top of the head. Now, 
When this energy shakes loose and it starts to move, the sympathetic nervous system switches on. And instead of releasing energy out, like you're being chased by a predator or you're, you're having an orgasm, that same energy is going up into the brain and the brain switches on and it goes into these very high, high frequencies called gamma brainwave patterns. Now the person has an arousal, but the arousal isn't fear. Not an orgasm. Well, in the brain. An, an orgasm of the mind. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's energy that's being released into the brain mm. and you can only describe it as ecstasy or bliss. So the energy of guilt that was stored from thinking and feeling in the same way releases and it travels up to the brain and it's going back. And when it reaches the brain, what happens? You get more energy in the brain and it begins to produce that external field. So you're, you're beginning to create a field around your body. Well, once the energy is moved, you're gonna feel pretty blessed in that moment. The, the amazing thing is that that rush of energy that's moving into the brain is changing the brain's physiology and producing that field. Now you have energy to heal. Mm. So now the body is a magnet again. And it's as the energy moves up the spinal cord and it starts passing through those spinal nerves and there's a lot of dynamics going on on the body, that energy that was once stored in, in that one of those energy centers that's released is energy to heal, energy to create a new future. You're replenishing your field and now the body becomes more of a magnet instead of an inert piece of metal with no charge.